Alright. So I have my drying hides. Ignore my dirty, dirty tub that's had rabbit hides in it for about two weeks now. Right. Um, so I pull these out of the pickle and I rinse them and I wash them and I hung them to start to dry last night. <clears throat> They've been a pickle about 10 days, which is maybe a little too short. We'll see. Lots of places say a week, up to two weeks. So we just got to play around and see what works. Um, these have been drying overnight. They were drippy, like soaking wet, like the back, the leather felt like Play-Doh. You could just like rip it apart with your bare hands. You didn't want to work with it too much then because it's just really fragile. But um, this is still pretty wet. Um, you can see the fur. It's a little clumpy. It's getting there. It's way drier. Um, it's starting to dry out pretty good. It's still really, really pliable. But before it really, really dries out, you just want to start working these edges just a little bit. You're not really breaking the leather at this point, you're just keeping it stretched out. It's going to want to just shrink up and contract, and it makes it harder to pull and break the fibers of the leather. So that one's pretty cool. <clears throat> you can kind of see here where it's a little bit darker. It's been stained by blood that sat on it. I should have rinsed these hides a lot better before I stored them, but that's okay. So, you can see as I pull, it gets a little bit lighter, a little bit whiter. And that's the uh, fibers of the skin breaking, which is what creates that real soft suede-like leather on the back of a rabbit hide. I'm not going to pull too hard on these edges because I did rip the shit out of one already. I'll have to go back and try to sew it, so that'll be its own adventure. Because it's my favorite one. Oh, fuck. See? You see? Just like that. <clears throat> hands is too strong. But um, this pickle really worked out. I haven't had any hair slip at all yet. Hopefully it stays that way. I guess hair slip's not so much the problem now, it's just the leather itself will start to rot if it's hasn't been preserved correctly. Hair slip would be like, <clears throat> on the side, if like just chunks of hair, like hair comes out, like there's a lot of loose hair flying everywhere right now, but we're gonna use that here. Um, if just chunks of fur had just pulled out and you had a big bald spot, uh, spot of leather there, that would be hair slip. Which just means that a lot of bacterial growth started, especially on the fur side, and pushed all the fur out of the follicles. It's, pretty much, it's just rot. That's your biggest enemy. So yeah, you spend two days just tugging on rabbit hides. Keep your dirty thirds to do so. <clears throat> or just woke up. A little, a little flummy. A little clumped. Like, this is how thin this hide is. That's... It again. Definitely a learning process. <clears throat> See, look how it's all folded up there. Just want to gently pull it apart. It's actually its little leg, too. I don't know if you leave those on or sew them up or what. I have to look into that because it's kind of a little funny right now. Just his little leg hanging out. Right? There's a, another drier part you can see. See how it's darker right here? I don't know if you can. Kind of. Just kind of cool. Gently, of course. It's 
you go back over with a really fine grit sandpaper and you get some of this extra like <clears throat> flesh that you didn't get off and it helps make it softer. It's a broken hide right there. I don't have to do that part again. I guess you could wait till it's all the way dry, but it would be particularly hard. Well, none of this is hard, but I mean, it would make it harder. The dogs are so excited about these, by the way. I have at least three of them with their noses in the crack of the bathroom door right now, just huffing and puffing at me. Just to be really careful. All the critters have been super obsessed with this stuff, and it's, I mean, <clears throat> the preserving process I use isn't really all that good for them. They've been soaked and rinsed, but, I mean, there's still plenty of chemical hanging out. So don't let them eat it. I mean, if they do eat it, it's probably not like the end of the world, but don't, don't let them eat it. Um, I'm going to try an egg tanning method down the line that they would be able to eat. Oh. There we go. I have absolutely destroyed this hide, just ripping it to pieces, but it's starting to break and uh, it's starting to dry. Where's the next one? This is the one I split. Try to sew him up. This is going to be one of the pretty ones. His edges are starting to get a little tough. So you can see how, so this is a darker rabbit. It doesn't have the super light pigment like the white ones do. This dark stuff here, as you pull and break the fibers, it's going to become not quite dry enough. White. There we go. I'm going to be really gentle with him because I already ripped him up. I feel bad because he's one of my favorites. For thicker hides, like this deer hide that I have outside, they're not nearly as thin. Like, their skin's not thin. Not only do they have more flesh and meat and membranes sitting on them, but, like, their, th their skin itself, which is just what the leather is, is just the skin, is way thicker than this rabbit. Like, I can rip this rabbit with my hands. I can't do that with that deer. Um, so I'll have to actually shave down the skin until it's thin enough to be pliable. So I haven't quite worked out how I do that because I don't have any of the tools, but you know, I can probably figure it out, find a good rock, right? So I'm just working around. No, oh, yeah, this one may be satisfying, right? Keeping those edges where you're doing them. <clears throat> Fletcher's losing it out there. He really wants it here. You can just keep doing this throughout the day as it dries.